Hey, it's Jessica DeMassa with WTF Health. What's the future health? We are talking to the who's who of health technology and health innovation to try to make sense of all the changes that are happening in healthcare in real time and get some insights on the trends that are shaping the market as we move into the future. So today, uh, joining me, we have Stephanie Telenius. She is the founder and CEO of Vita Health. Stephanie, it's so great to have you with us. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me. All right, so you guys are in a very, very hot space, chronic condition management. Um, you just closed a, a funding round, 25 million earlier this year in April. Um, tell me a little bit about what's going on with you. I mean, you guys have been um, growing and scaling. I read some great numbers of, um, about just you know how big you are. I mean, you're available to the numbers in that press release about the 25 mil raise. Um, throughout there, 1.5 million people have access to Vita Health, and you you saw even in COVID, you know, an uptick. You said it was expected to, that there was growth, but 500,000 new users from the, the beginning of March to the end of April. I mean, that's pretty incredible. So, what's going on at Vita Health? Uh, give us a little bit of a catch up. We've been growing like crazy during this time, uh, uh, as you can imagine. Uh, chronic disease is a really important factor when, when you're at risk. Uh, it puts you more at risk for COVID. Uh, and chronic mental health is also an issue in, in this time. So we're seeing lots of demand from employers and payers. And we had already um, signed a lot of new deals coming into this year. So we had planned to, to scale quite significantly this year, but COVID's just accelerated even more. And, uh, you know, we're honestly... Uh, really grateful that we're able to serve people during this time. It's, you know, in some ways, uh, it's hard to be socially isolated in our homes and, you know, uh, living this way, but we're so heads down focused on building the company that it, and being able to help others that it, it is sort of, in some ways, a, a way to focus and relieve uh, the tension right now. And we know we're helping others, which is uh, really great to see. Uh, we've had some really good outcomes, and uh, we're seeing people enroll in in mental health, uh, in particular, at, at, at enormous rates, like three three times what we'd seen uh, just before COVID. So I think you know people are struggling, and we're helping them. That's fantastic. Tell me a little bit more about some of the outcomes that you're seeing, because I mean, the, the thing that's been cool about you guys from the very beginning is that you've been differentiated in the sense that you've taken this real holistic approach to chronic condition management from the beginning. So it's like, while some of the competitors in this space, like Lavongo or Omada, uh, Verda or OneDrop have been looking at acquiring you know, different solutions or, or building in mental health or building in hypertension or building in you know, MSK, we just saw that with Omada acquiring Fizera. You guys have really kind of taken this holistic approach from the very beginning. So uh, what are you, how, I mean, how are you seeing that impact the, po the health of the populations that you've been working with, especially as, like you said, you know, um, things have moved into a more virtual space as a result of the pandemic? Well, I, I think that COVID is an accelerant for things that should have happened naturally anyway. And what you're seeing at large in mental health and in chronic care is uh, virtual care is now the norm. So before COVID, I think virtual care was like three to 5% of total visits in the country. And now it's 40%. Uh, and we, from day one, wanted to make sure we were meeting consumers where they're at and really solving their uh, their conditions in, in one holistic way, like in a whole health uh, approach. So we, um, and this really came from my experience in my own family. You know, my father had uh, diabetes, obesity, CHF, COPD, and depression. And we needed a continuous care uh, solution with real humans and remote monitoring to manage his conditions. And, and the intersection is really important. People who have like diabetes and depression, for example, sometimes it's hard to know which is causing which, and you have mm -hmm. to be able to really handle, meet people where they're at and handle both. And so, uh, and with COVID, the, the other kind of complexity that has come into play is that people with chronic disease are, you know, much more likely to be at risk. So the CDC had some just terrifying statistics, you know, 78% of people that are admitted to an ICU have a chronic disease for admitted for COVID. And 90% and of people that are dying are had an underlying chronic condition. So what we're seeing is employers and payers come to us and say, please help, you know, our individuals with chronic disease. And then with mental health, um, about 80% uh, of employers are now saying they want to provide a mental health solution because it's, it's a pervasive issue during this time. 
And, uh, and so we're seeing a lot of interest in, in, in covering mental health conditions. Uh, yeah, a little and, bit more about that. I know that the, the fundraising, you know, part of it, you know, it, um, what I've read about it was that it was to help kind of grow out your mental health services. So what do you have on tap there in terms of kind of, you know, maybe upping the ante on the current offering that you have? Well, actually, our current offering is really strong. Uh, we just wanted to scale more. Uh, and so we cover both subclinical and clinical. Uh, so for example, we have solutions for subclinical issues like sleep, stress, uh, subclinical anxiety. Uh, we have evidence-based interventions and we have coaches that you know, text, audio, video support 24 by seven. We also have clinical uh, programs that are evidence-based, uh, cognitive behavioral therapy programs for depression and anxiety. Um, and then we, we also refer out uh, to a network of uh, PCPs, psychologists, therapists uh, that are helping if people need medication. So we essentially have a full stack mental health solution and we're just seeing a lot more demand for the subclinical and the clinical uh, because a lot more of the, the population is just suffering. If you just, I mean, if you look at the data, what typically one in five people have a mental health condition before COVID. Um, what we have seen recently, especially people with um, chronic conditions, typically when, when they come into VITA, we get an eligibility or a claim file. And typically you're seeing about 17 to 20% that have anxiety or depression. Um, and in our own data, we're seeing when we administer a test like the PHQ, uh, we're seeing 65% are saying they have some kind of depression. Wow. And 50, you know, 45 to 50% are saying they have anxiety. And I think that's just, that's just three to four times increase since COVID because there's just, everyone's in a really hard place in their homes. They're worried about their loved ones. They're dealing with family stress. And so, and then job stress, unemployment. Uh, so it's just exacerbated. And I'm sure too, you know, like you said, uh, it's been pointed out early on that those who have chronic conditions are at greater risk. I'm sure they're worried even about their own health. I mean, I know I, I would be, mm -hmm. I'd be a lot more concerned um, if I did have an underlying chronic condition, you know, about even just going to the grocery store. Um, so tell me, I guess, a little bit more about the, the solution that you guys have implemented, because I've seen, you know, as far as the, as, as far as some of the other aspects in addition to the mental health. So, I mean, I know diabetes, prediabetes, hypertension, and I've seen even, you guys have a very cool little bundle of devices that can be deployed as well. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, mm -hmm. it seems like this is, you know, it's like, if nothing else, you know, this pandemic has accelerated um, not only interest, but also uh, interest among consumers, but also interest among, like you said, employers and health plans about how to get some of this cool tech stuff into the home so that, you know, care can be um, delivered remotely. So what are you, are you seeing an uptick in terms of, of utilization as far as some of those devices are concerned or people willing in their homes to kind of like, you know, integrate the data for you with their, their glucometer or with their Fitbit or some of the other things that you guys offer. Okay. Yeah, well, we, uh, for all of our programs, uh, you know, we take a holistic approach and we provide uh, the human touch. So either a coach or a nurse or RD or a therapist, but we also ship devices. So we ship cellular enabled uh, glucometers, blood pressure cuffs, scales, and devices like that. And, you know, I think what you're seeing as a general trend in the country is if you have an underlying chronic condition, you know that you're at a higher risk and you want to do everything you can to manage your condition, make sure your immune system is in the best shape it can be so that if you were to get COVID, you're, you're going to do well managing it. And um, there's clear evidence that if you're if you're in a good place health wise and you're managing your condition keeping it in control keeping your blood glucose your blood pressure under control you're exercising sleeping well that you you'll be able to handle covid in a much better way so you know people are um are proactive they want to make sure they're going to be okay they don't they don't want to get the condition because they're going to have a higher likelihood of, of risk and they don't want to go to the icu so i think people are doing whatever they can to manage uh their their health and, and really control their destiny if you will yeah. What's the conversation been like with some of those um, clients that you have? I'm just curious, you know, in terms of what they've been focused on 
um, and what they've been concerned about. I know you guys have some pretty big, um, large self-insured employee, employer clients, and you work with the health plan. We talked about Guidewell at one point. Um, so, I mean, tell me, I guess, a little bit about, you know, what you're hearing from them when they're talking to you about, about Vita and the things that you're able to do in terms of health and care for those populations. Where's the conversation at today? Has it changed since before COVID? Well, I think they're just looking for a lot more support for chronic conditions and mental health. Uh, so what we're seeing, particularly with large payers, is uh, individuals that are polychronic, you know, that they're suffering from both. Like most of the people we get who have diabetes also have uh, about 85% of them have hyperlipidemia. 75% uh, have high comorbid hypertension. So, and that was true before COVID, but it's just they're, they're more concerned about those individuals now. Sure. Uh, and we're seeing higher enroll, much higher enrollment in mental health. And, uh, and then we're seeing families also really, and spouses really encourage um, their family members who have chronic disease to participate. Uh, and we're seeing higher spousal enrollment as well. All right, what do you think is gonna happen in this chronic condition management space? We talked at the beginning about how it's, it's, it's a hot space. It's been very competitive for a while and the heat kind of got turned up when um, Lavongo went public last year and it's just, the funding rounds have been getting bigger and bigger, including for you guys. So, I mean, what do you think is gonna happen next? And this, I mean, is it gonna stay as competitive as it is? Do you think the field's been set? Are we gonna get some upstarts? Like, uh, give us some predictions for the future. I know you don't have a crystal ball, but- I don't have a crystal <laughs> ball. Um, <laughs> I do. I would say that COVID is an accelerant for what should have happened anyway. I think the, the continuous virtual care solutions are the way to manage chronic disease. It's a day to day. Uh, it's something that you really deal with and you live with every day. And, and the, the more proactive and the, and the more you keep things in check, the better you're going to live a long, healthy, happy life. And so this is the way to manage chronic disease. And our system right now spends a lot of time reactively, uh, you know, with, with pharmacy interventions, with doctor visits, ER visits, hospitalizations. So this would, this is the way to go. It should have happened um, faster than it had. I mean, I think if you look at the last decade, we've taken essentially, I think a decade to get to like 5% market share for virtual care. And in, within three months with COVID, we're now at 40% market share for virtual care. So do I don't think, think we're, high? I don't think we're going back. Oh, I don't God. think we're going back. Do you think it'll <laughs> um, stay that high? I mean, cause like part of it. I don't know. I don't know if it'll stay um, perfectly at, at that rate, but I don't think we're going back. I, you know what I, again, what I think you're seeing at large in, in the country is things that are being accelerated, whether that be uh, virtual care, online delivery of groceries, online shopping, like all these things I think will stay. I mean, once people have tried the product experience and they realize how much better it is, it's just so much more convenient. I mean, it's so hard to get um, to the doctor and, you know, it's, it, you, if you can talk to a nutritionist or a diabetes educator or a coach, write it from your home with, right from your phone with text, audio and video support 24 by seven, it's just, and you know, they're looking at all your blood glucose data, your, your um, blood pressure data, they're analyzing your nutrition. I mean, that's just such a better experience than our current uh, and, and by the way, doctors, I mean, we work with a lot of doctors, they want that continuous care. They want people to be managing their condition in between doctor visits and they want to see all the data. So I don't think we're going back. I think we're, we're you know, I don't know if it'll stay at 40% or it'll moderate. Uh, but I, I think this is here to stay. It's a huge, uh, it, it's really important actually for our healthcare system, honestly, because we're, we're spending money in the wrong ways. Uh, and this is a, a much more cost-effective way to manage chronic disease. So I, th I think it's here to stay and you're seeing people love it. They love the product. You know, people have been waiting for the, the sort of Amazon of healthcare, uh, the simplification of healthcare for a long time. I think you're right on that. And I know you've got, I mean, I, I, I've gone through your background and Stephanie, you've got like a, a, a tech uh, background pedigree that is just like second to none. I mean, you've worked for eBay, you've worked for PayPal, you've worked for Google. I mean, you even took a, a, a online pharmacy company public during the dot com boom. I think that was like incredible. Like, I mean, there's a lot to learn. Is there, as, as you look at, you know, your own experience in some of these, these companies and even, you know, whether it's living through that dot com, you know, um, boom and then bust in the late 90s or even like some of your, some of the work that you've done since then with those companies that I just named. You know, I mean, what do you think, like, in terms of health tech, you know, are there any lessons learned from how the tech industry grew up over the last 20 years that could be applied to the health tech industry as it grows up? 
there's so many lessons. Uh, but, you know, I think the most important thing is that we're seeing real change in the industry. And, you know, I, I remember distinctly going to um, conferences and people being really skeptical about healthcare, you know, being as interesting as consumer tech, but you're really seeing a shift. And uh, I, I don't think, I don't think you're going to, you, you look, you've got Amazon and Apple and Google and all of them are now playing in healthcare too. And I really honestly believe that like the next 10 to 20 years are going to be so like a revolution. I want to go as far as to say it is really a revolution and, I, and hopefully it's the consumer that benefits the most uh, because we're so long overdue for this. And healthcare has been, uh, unfortunately, the consumer experience, the level of accessibility has been much more limited than it had to be. And there were some systematic issues that needed to be resolved. And I think we're getting at them now. And also as a country, we don't have a choice. I mean, as far as lessons from um, the lessons that I personally take away are the ones that I lived every day uh, when I built consumer products in, in shopping and commerce and and payments. I mean, you really have to make a product that people love and use. Like we have a really high NPS score uh, mm -hmm. in the seventies and people love our product. We, you know, we, we spend all every day just sweating the details. Um, I'm sure you know, really making sure trust. we're adding value to the consumer and yeah, and I think, I it's all about the consumer. Too. Yeah. As far as that goes, I mean, you said you do payments, especially on the payment side of it. I think, I think early on, you know, to my own experiences with the, the internet as it was coming up and like e-commerce and it was like, that was the thing. Is it safe to put my credit card? I remember, I remember, I remember in the early days, like I'll never forget at eBay, <laughs> there was a receptionist that got a, had a literally, literally a big garbage bag every day of checks. And oh, when we no. first launched online payments, people were like, are they really going to pay online? Yeah. And now you would just, now, of course, you would just put your credit card online. It's not a big deal, but big deal. it was a really big deal then. And I'm sure 20 years from now, we're going to be like, well, of course, you just talk to your doctor on the phone. <laughs> of course, you just yeah. like, why do we ever question that? <laughs> Right, exactly. That's what I'm thinking. I'm hoping. I'm hoping so, and I'm hoping that you guys are able to, you know, leverage your background and the things you've lived through to to capitalize on this. Stephanie, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure to speak with you, and thank you too for letting us pick your brain about some of the things that might be coming down the pike. You know, I didn't mean to put you on the spot there, but I think no, it's that great, was great to uh, great to chat with you. Thank you for having me, and uh, enjoy this uh, this time. Stay safe and oh stay God, healthy. Likewise. Likewise. <laughs> All right, guys, this Take is care. Stephanie Selenius. She is the CEO of Vita Health. Definitely go check them out, um, learn more about what they're doing. It's pretty incredible um, it's the way that they've packaged things up to manage chronic conditions, um, not only during this time of COVID, but you know, to, to lead the transformation of healthcare moving forward. I'm Jessica Damato with WTF Health. Check out the rest of these interviews with thought leaders in the health tech space on my YouTube channel. Uh, just search for WTF Health. We'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks so much for joining us.